So <clears throat> this is a presentation, um, a co-presentation between Sophie and I, and it draws on Sophie's field research on Occupy Wall Street, a movement that she participated in as both scholar and activist. Um, we came to collaborate on this paper through multiple joint interests in feminist theory and activism, um, and in the role of new media in cultural and political formations of various kinds. I think we're all aware um, of the role that new media played in the genesis, development, and undertaking of the Occupy mobilizations, and there was a lot of commentary about this um, during Occupy's most active period. Our focus is in one sense narrower. We're uh, specifically concerned with feminist efforts at Occupy, um, but it's also broader in the sense that we're interested in the use of new media technologies in social movements, um, including ones like Occupy that had both prominent online and offline um, dimensions. So the slogan of Occupy, we are the 99%, offered an attractive discourse of unity, but the focus on economic disparity also overshadowed other social hierarchies that manifested in the physical and virtual spaces of Occupy. Um, in looking more closely at how feminist and queer activists challenged these hierarchies at the encampments and online, um, we want to highlight the extent of feminist agency and emphasize the importance of putting an intersectional feminist analysis into dialogue with the dominant discourses of the movement. So there have been um, ongoing debates about the impact of digital technologies on political engagement, um, including the extent to which they encourage meaningful participation. Uh, Manuel Castells has noted the importance of contemporary media to the structure to the structure and development of an international public sphere. But while digital technologies have indeed become central to many contemporary social movements, um, Beth has just talked about uh, the slut walks, user engagement with new media does not always um, offer effective political agency um, and is not necessarily progressive, as Lisa Nakamura's presentation also showed us last night. So as a counterpoint to Castells, Erica Paulson, for example, has discussed how new media practices help produce elite uh, social formations globally, and she's talking about the use of social media like Twitter. Um, and then we have various scholars arguing against what Graham Turner has called digital optimism. Um, in feminist scholarship, there have also been critical accounts both about the gender dimensions of digital access um, the work of Virginia Eubanks and Saskia Sassen, for example, and about how hierarchies of both identity, uh, how hierarchies of identity play out both in online representations and discourses. Um, again, Nakamura's work, but also uh, the work of Jesse Daniels um, um, and many others. So for social movements, a key question is how to produce um, spaces for collective agency that facilitate what Sonia Nunez Puente and Antonio Garcia Jimenez in their discussion of Spanish feminist portal sites refer to as online feminist praxis, um, or broadly speaking, what has been variously called cyber feminism by Sadie Plant, techno feminism by Judy Beichman, feminist cyber activism. Um, I think Beth used the term, um, what was the term you used? <laughs> Hacktivism, yeah. Um, in studying feminist activism at Occupy Wall Street, the methods that uh, we used included um, participant observation of the different feminist groups and caucuses, semi-structured interviews that lasted from one to two hours um, with members of several of these groups, and also um, virtual ethnography of various of the websites um, and social media, Twitter, Facebook. Um, Sophie's participation was partly as an insider, um, as a fellow, fellow occupier and a longtime um, activist, while her identities along the lines of uh, nationality, race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, and class were sometimes aligned with and sometimes differed from uh, the other occupiers. Um, and she's happy to talk more about her posi positionality um, if there are questions. One of the key accomplishments of Occupy was a reclamation and politicization, if ev even if just temporary, of public spaces. Um, this is a photo that Sophie took at Occupy Wall Street, which shows a decidedly non-digital um, 
uh, side of Occupy, so you see a bulletin board, like a hard bulletin board. Um, there's a list of working groups. I don't think you can read those very well. Um, it says like medical, outreach, um, kitchen, media, and so on. None of the feminist and queer groups that um, Sophie looked at are actually listed there. Um, and then a list of uh, activities for the day. But these places were fraught from the beginning by an insufficient attention to differences um, in privilege and how they affected people's ability to participate. So to review um, very quickly, but I guess 20% less quickly than um, we need to um, because of uh, one less speaker, um, other scholars have brought up uh, issues around race and racial hierarchies um, and how those who um, were in racial and ethnic minorities, particularly those who were undocumented, um, faced different risks in being physically present at the encampments. Women and queer participants also had different experiences of physical comfort and safety compared to the middle and upper middle class and upper class white men who predominated at Occupy Wall Street. Um, and this was a key issue at the encampment uh, and not just at Wall Street. Um, and then there were the repercussions of publicly critiquing Occupy from feminist and other critical perspectives. Our data um, accord with recent accounts um, by, uh, by other uh, participants at Occupy where feminists encountered belittling, ostracism, and hostility. Furthermore, writing about the feminist mobilizations of the 1960s and 70s, um, many of us are probably familiar with Jo Freeman's critique of what she called the tyranny of structure structurelessness, um, where lack of formal structures ends up favoring those who already enjoy uh, class, uh, gender, race privilege, um, and it facilitates the informal power of certain individuals or certain cliques. Um, now, many feminist committees, caucuses, and affinity groups actually sprang up um, at Occupy Wall Street, and they made various kinds of contributions. Uh, the lack of an intersectional approach to class and economic issues spurred many feminist activists to articulate a more complex analysis, and their efforts really did help uh, reshape the directions of the movement. Um, they also were instrumental in raising consciousness about gender and other inequalities at the Occupy encampments themselves. For instance, feminist and queer participants pushed Occupy Wall Street to adopt language and practices uh, that contested heteronormativity and other privileges at the encampments. Um, this included use of strategies that uh, some of these, uh, or possibly uh, most of these, didn't originate at Occupy but came from earlier social movements um, and queer politics. Uh, these included progressive stack and step up, step back, which in, aimed at elevating and giving priority to traditionally marginalized voices uh, within the General Assembly of Occupy. Um, and the telling of gender pronouns, which allowed individuals to articulate um, how they wanted their gender referred to. Um, Beth has talked about tensions amongst you know, feminist groups themselves uh, debating, and this was true at Occupy Wall Street as well. Um, but there were many participants that were committed to developing a feminist commons. Um, early on, this included not just the physical encampments, but online spaces. So one key issue was uh, the creation and the maintenance uh, of virtual spaces that implemented the explicit feminist practices akin to those in the encampments. Um, and, and then another was the coordination of both online and offline activism. And I'll hand over to uh, Sophie. All right, so um, I'm going to briefly um, discuss the ways in which uh, feminists with, uh, within the Occupy Wall Street movement have constructed uh, feminist spaces online. Um, so, okay. um, so first, uh, what we can say is that an uh, individual who did not feel comfortable participating in activities held at Zuccotti Park or those who did not necessarily have the time or the status um, to participate could experience agency through virtual participation. And here it's important to um, make the distinction between individual agency and collective um, agency. So while individual agency draws on the politics of personalization and individuation, collective uh, agency is anchored in a more collaborative process that um, often involve long period of negotiations. 
in virtual uh, spaces, the distinction between individual and group uh, viewpoints is often erased, as Fanton and Barassi have uh, told us, uh, since the voice of an individual can be as powerful as the voice uh, of a group whose viewpoint emerge only after lengthy discussion. So this raises particular uh, issues for activist group uh, seeking to express a collaboratively uh, produced radical agenda. Um, so um, let me tell you a little bit about our case study, um, a specific case study um, of a group called the uh, Trans World Order Affinity Group, uh, uh, which is a group that, in our opinion, have been able to craft an online feminist safer space. Um, so that's the, the website that they have created. So um, they, the TOG, which is the acronym uh, for the Trans World Order Affinity Group, started a, a communication and tech hub at OccupyWallST.org along the free, libre, open source uh, software model. And it quickly became very, very popular. So. Um, uh, the blog entries often, um, the, the comments on the on the blog entries often range from 100 to 400, and even sometimes more than 400, and that speaks uh, volume to the popularity of their well-crafted um, virtual endeavor. Uh, their Twitter feed and their Facebook page was also extremely uh, popular, uh, having, for instance, almost half a million likes on their Facebook page. Um, okay. So um, the TOG, one, some, some features of the TOG is um, that most of them, mo most of the group was composed of self-identified women. Uh, so half of them were trans women and queers, among whom um, were journalists, hackers, uh, software developers, and other social media savvy uh, individual. And they were um, all feminist. Um, so, um, their, their hub, um, so physically, at the beginning, was located in a squatted apartment. So um, they were not physically located in Zuccotti Park, but for them, um, their, their, their project was an extension of uh, Zuccotti Park. And uh, so being in the same space um, strengthened their affect and their attachment to their virtual um, political and communicational project. So um, uh, one thing that is important to, to note is that they were constantly harassed and monitored and surveyed by the police, uh, by the NYPD. Um, as the NYPD knew that uh, this affinity group was central to the um, Occupy Movement communication effort. And um, also what we, we can say is that some activists um, did not recognize their endeavor as being as vas valuable as what was happening um, in Zuccotti Park because bodies were not put on the lines as some, um, some suggested. Um, ho having no idea about the trauma of, uh, tran that a trans woman can face um, if um, arrested. Um, with regards to their publishing models, um, uh, on, on their website. Um, they basically never attach um, individual names to post, so their articles were without attribution. And this was, um, according to us, an effective strategy to exploit the possibilities of the web, reducing the possibilities of members suffering personal attack uh, online and distributing the anxiety uh, that any one person might um, felt if they were publishing in their names um, alone. And finally, a last feature um, is that um, most, if not all, of the, um, the TOG post um, on their website alluded to feminist, trans, and queer um, inflection. Uh, so now, let me uh, brief you, uh, tell you about uh, some of the challenges that um, Occupy Wall Street activists uh, faced and that somewhat uh, the TOG were able to um, to counter. So um, 
In our interviews, uh, feminist undead to accord greater importance to the decision and debates that were happening in the encampment than uh, to raising awareness about intersectional practices online, crafting strategies to lessen online bashing, um, or linking the development of online feminist uh, praxis with a radical political uh, project. Um, in, um, in, in the virtual world, it seems also more difficult to talk about issues of racism, of transphobia, of sexism, at least without um, a backlash against those who were uh, raising these issues. But nonetheless, um, we argue in our paper that the trans uh, World Order Affinity Group su successfully harnessed the power of the internet to foreground issues that were dear to the Occupy movement and in turn uh, help shape uh, the Occupy uh, identity while at the same time um, foregrounding a trans queer feminist um, agenda. Um, Another challenge is that um, it was um, difficult to implement strategies online um, that, that were, um, let's say, akin or somewhat akin to those um, offline. So our, uh, uh, our interviewees felt that offline, a group uh, could more easily negotiate disagreement and lesser um, escalation or lower escalation while uh, creating online safer spaces and feminist online praxis within Occupy Wall Street was more difficult, um, particularly with uh, the people who had less uh, experience with, for instance, online decision making. Um, and maybe a last point um, would be that uh, it seemed uh, difficult to su sustain um, online uh, feminist communities um, that related to, to Occupy. But the TOG um, website is still up and running and uh, it's still very popular. And so in conclusion, um, the, uh, what we can say is uh, that it was often challenging to create spaces of productive dialogue where those who were um, marginalized would come forward and those with more power and privilege could acknowledge the inequalities and exclusion. Um, understanding the dynamics of privilege led many to react defensively um, and feminists at Occupy were often accused of being divisive or criticized at a more personal level. And that was both happening online and offline. Um, so, um, so what we can say is that uh, the TOG case study is an example of an influential uh, online feminist space that contested norms of gender I identity and expression and its uh, successes are important uh, highlights for future feminist efforts online. Thank you.